Writing our own laws of peace. How to enforce our laws of peace. First, you start by taking notes of every little principle you're hearing that resonates with you. If you don't get it all the first time, watch this class again and again. It's on video. Make a list of pros and cons like the Benjamin Franklin list and prioritize it like he did based on your highest values. You see, he was also on to figuring out what his personal tree of life and tree of death was. Put it in writing. There's something that happens when you put pen to paper. The way the right and left brain work, it helps to see it. It helps it really sink in. It's also speaking out into the physical from the paper, which is also how the vision boards work. So put it in writing. If you do a vision board, make it all positive. It's okay to see a clear picture of what's wrong with your life in your mind, but as you build a more positive picture, literally see yourself walking into the new space filled with beauty and harmony. That's Basic Meditation 101. And we take what we see and make the key changes in our life. Remember, we're doing this with love and understanding. Have you ever heard of Love and Logic? That's a wonderful parenting class I've been through. It's recommended by state programs, and they're teaching some great principles. It's a beautiful program. Love and Logic. Again, different words for the same principles, as with clarity and charity, love and light, knowledge and power, intelligence and energy. The head can't live without the heart. And it all starts in the heart. It's from the heart we're shown how to think and how to prioritize what's most important. As we're recognizing our tree of life and tree of death, we're recognizing our true constitution since these laws are all interconnected, this can only go one way. All truth can be circumscribed into one great whole. One truth leads to another and another until we've gone full circle. It doesn't mean your circle is unbreakable yet. We must continue until it is unbreakable, until the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. So if you take action with these principles and put them into practice, then shall even greater things be made known to you. Enforce the core laws first, what is most important. We have to recognize what is most disruptive in our lives, otherwise we run around and chase our tails with distraction and manipulation. We've got to get to the root of the issues and figure out what this is really all about. What is real? How do you know what's disturbing your peace the most? Well, one thing you can do is look at what's stealing and cheating from you the most. What's taking the most amount of money out of your bank account? is a big clue to that. What do you pay the most interest for? That's a big clue. The first rule in journalism is follow the money. Money plays the largest part in determining the course of history. Karl Marx, Communist Manifesto, 1848. Distraction and manipulation is one of the oldest tricks in the book of trickery. This is happening a lot in our system just to keep the majority of people down. Distraction and manipulation is any smaller issue that's given more attention and focus than the real issues. A lot of what the news focuses on is negative entertainment and yet haven't told you a thing. Without the tree of death, we have no drama. No drama for entertainment. 
and too many people love their drama. So while they're entertained by distraction and manipulation, their real drama in their life piles up. People love the escape from reality from their real drama and pain. It's almost like it's become too much for them to handle. But again, as long as they run from it, it only gets bigger. So it's time to embrace it and focus and solve our bigger issues. It's time to take things to a higher level. Hollywood movies will always be an option, and they've only become better and better. But too often, they become an addicting escape from reality too much. We have no shortage of entertainment. It's time to integrate the truth or disintegrate. It's do or die. This is literally life and death we're talking about. We learn from this realm by experience, a lot of it. Pleasure and pain, health and sickness, the differences between the light and the dark, and that everything has its opposite, yin and yang. That's why we're here. And the challenges that have been here in our life, in this particular place, they were meant to be a challenge. Otherwise, we do get bored. Getting to the point where we are bored with a principle and we're ready to ask a golden question at the right time again. How can my life get greater than this? What's the next step? How can I get faster, easier, smarter? And then it happens. You're expanded time after time. Be careful about what you ask for. I'd rather learn from other people's experience in suffering than suffer myself. I've been hurt, but I've also been healed, empowered, and protected in a way that I know to give God all the credit. Everything happens for a reason. There is purpose to why we're here. Each of life's tests are wonderful opportunities of empowerment to learn all we can here. Some think, why do I have to be tested and play a victim throughout the whole thing as a matter of habit? I say, no, you don't have to rise up to the challenge with every challenge. But with everything that comes along, I say, we get to be tested, to be challenged. And if we choose wisely, we get to rise up, not for the bummer, but the woo-hoo, for the blessing and the empowerment, as fast and easy as possible with the right approach. Otherwise, with the wrong approach and attitude, we could be drugged through the whole thing and still not get the empowerment that was meant for us, right? So we don't have to be blessed. We get to. If we get tempted or whatever, we don't get tested beyond our ability. Whatever it is, it just happens. And it happens in the time where it's amazing the timing and how the universe works. Some things can take a little time, really. And with hindsight, we see better sometimes. But if you look at it with great enough perspective, look what happened with my dad. I know it was actually perfect that he hadn't planned on the death of his physical body, but he already accomplished his whole life mission. I had not realized it yet. So when it happened, initially, I was not prepared either. I was hit with some heavy emotions and I was instantly angry, yet only for a matter of seconds. With enough time looking back, I know there was a perfect plan for that. And I believe that about anything that's happened with anybody and everybody, no matter how terrible the tragedy may seem, I really feel in my heart and believe that there is a perfect plan for all of us. Embrace your pain. Don't run from it like most people do. Race for it 
not from it. Race for the truth. Instead of a drug or magic bullet, illusion of cure. And people escape from reality with whatever, narcotics, whatever. It's only a temporary escape from their very real pain. They may be lucky enough to have a beautiful experience without ending up dead in the gutter, but it won't be permanent until they finally make the change in their life. And if they embrace that pain, there's a gold nugget of empowerment in it. It will show them why it's there, what needs to be changed in their life. I say love it, embrace it, listen to it from its point of view. Get your ego out of the way. Ask for intuition. Did we sign up for this? For whatever adversarial challenges? Whether you can say yes to that right now or not, as I have done my best to see it that way, it's become clearer and easier than ever over time to see it that way. And sometimes God shows up for us to clearly see.